Alrighty, ladies, thank you so much for coming today and supporting this class. I know you're going to learn a lot today. And uh, thank you for getting up early. I know Sunday morning is not the best to get up early when you can sleep in a little bit later, but thank you so much. I'd like to start out with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for all these wonderful ladies being here today. And Father, I pray you'll just uh, use me, God, in a mighty and powerful way to teach this class, God, the way that you want this class to be taught. I pray for the interaction that, you know, we'll just um, all open up and share about our lives as well. And, you know, just so we can all empower and inspire each other to be better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The title of my class is God Bless Me Indeed and Enlarge My Territory. So I have a question for you. Who in here has read the prayer of Jabez? Okay, awesome. That's great. This is an incredible book. And you know, the prayer of Jabez is the smallest scripture, but so mighty. Okay, the prayer itself is very tiny, but it is packed with a valuable testimony of the understanding and loyalty that Jabez had to God. Now, some people call him Jabez, but I call him Jabez. Look at how Jabez asked God to enlarge his territory. He wanted more influence. Don't we want more influence in our lives? More responsibility? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Woo. An opportunity to be used for God's purpose, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, we have to be ready when we pray this prayer, and you're going, you're going to see why. I have been praying this prayer for 11 years, and I may have to stop right now and put that stop sign up to God because he keeps blessing me every single day and enlarging my territory. The, uh, I want to share my backstory of how I discovered this small but mighty prayer. 11 years ago, about 12 years ago, uh, my husband came to me and he came out on our back patio and he said, uh, can we talk? Yeah, you know how that goes, right? <laughs> That's being married. And I said, sure. He said, um, I want to know where that person went that I fell in love with. I want to know where my wife is and I said well I'm right here on the patio <laughs> he goes no you're not here you become a hermit you're not the person that I fell in love with I want her back that's pretty convicting right mm -hmm. and um, he said I want that woman back that would do anything for God go any place for God and help any sister that came in her life where did she go mm. and I said I don't know he goes you know I love you right and I said yes I said but I don't like you right now because this is very strong stuff you're sharing with me right here so basically he had sisters coming over to my house but I really did want to be a hermit because I didn't realize that I was totally not out of menopause yet you all know what I'm talking about here, some of you. Mm -hmm. And so basically, I asked him if I could just go take a prayer walk. And in that prayer walk, I asked God to make this abundantly clear what my husband was talking about. And by the end of time I got home from that prayer walk, he did. Mm -hmm. So I begged God to start using me again in a very, very powerful way. I, and basically, after that, I next day, one of my friends who's in this class right now uh, gave me the prayer of Jabez. And in the page, first couple of pages, it says that if you apply this prayer, that God will send you so many blessings that you will put that stop sign out. And I thought, well, this is kind of bogus. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, but I kept reading for two weeks. Nothing was happening. Three weeks. I put the book down. I said, oh, this is not working for me. And next thing I know, I heard this voice in my head going, pick that book back up, pick that book. You know how God talks to us, right? Mm -hmm. So I started reading. The next week, 
I was doing a fundraiser for a domestic, uh, domestic violence organization out in Danville called Sheltering Wing. And after the fundraiser, the pastor sat down with me and three of my friends who was in the ch who's all in the church and said, ladies, there's a need for another organization like us on the west side of town. And I believe you ladies are being called to do this. I looked at them and I said, what did he just say? And then he looked straight at me and he says, I just met you tonight, but I believe you're being called by God to lead this. And I said, well, I always wanted to open a pet shelter. <laughs> <laughs> I just had my wires crossed, evidently. So make a long story short, um, I opened the domestic violence organization in 2007 and is still going strong today. So I went from a hermit one week to taking on a whole community that God put in my path. Now the funny thing of it was, I was petrified of public speaking. But yet, I'm the spokesperson now and I have to go out and public speak. And I can tell you what, I'm so glad that the first talk I did they had a podium because my, my, actually my papers were going like this. <laughs> However, I knew that God answered my prayer of being used by him again. I didn't know it was going to be that big. <laughs> so I want to read 1 Chronicles 4, 9, 10. So somebody bring that up on their phone, please, for me. But I want to talk about the, actually, no, I'm sorry, I have this. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me. Do you hear me, sisters? Mm -hmm. Oh, that you would bless me, and indeed large my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from evil one. And God granted his request. That is 1 Chronicles 4, 9 through 10. Okay. Everybody has a handout, right? So I want to break this down a little bit. The prayer of Jabez is not magic and it's not selfish. It is a prayer that is an expression of your heart to God's. Let's take a look into the heart attitude of Jabez by looking at five distinctives of the word of this prayer. First, this prayer is very personal and intimate. Jabez did not ask God to bless the world. He said, please bless me. Praying for the world is a great thing to do, but praying for yourself is something you should never forget. So many times I've talked to sisters in this church that they feel that they're being selfish when they pray for themselves. That is not true. That is not true. How can God bless you in something if you're not asking for it? And we're going to get into that. We come to God in prayer empty so that he fills us back to be able to serve others and his people. Just like cars, we run and we run and we run, right? I mean, how many times do we feel like we're Wonder Woman, <laughs> right? We keep going and we keep going and we keep going. Okay, but if we're, not ref if we're not refreshing ourselves and filling that tank back up through scriptures or books or, you know, whatever, we're going to ke keep running on empty. And that's not how God wants us to be because then we can't serve his people. God has blessings to hand out to his children daily. Not weekly, not monthly, not yearly, daily. In Matthew 21, verse 22, it says, You can pray for anything, and if you have faith, you will receive it. This makes me stop and ask myself, I wonder how many blessings I have received because I have asked or believed I would get. I apologize, we had computer problems, so some of you may not even be on the same page. Just bear with me. Okay, share, I wanna have some sharing time. So how would it make you feel when you arrive in heaven, okay, and God escorts you to his storage warehouse? And in that storage warehouse, you have your name right there on that unit. And God opens the door and all these things are in there that you never asked God to bless you with. How would that make you feel? We can open this up. How would that make you feel? Darn! <laughs> Missed opportunity. Okay. All right, so when I picture this, you know, when I, op I, I had to do a visualization on, on this when I wrote my book, and I thought, well, there's a car in there, 
that I wanted. I never asked for it. There was people that I wanted to reach out to. There were my family members that I really didn't go to God and pray seriously about to become a disciple. You know, um, it, the list could just go on and on and on. But we can miss God's blessings by just not praying these prayers. So this prayer is not specific. If we limit our expectations and request one specific way we want God to bless us, we may be limiting ourselves, like I just said. That is not the intent of the prayer of Jabez. God's blessing is, by definition, directed and determined by God alone, not man. We may be praying a valid prayer, but allow for specific to be about your situation, not how it's answered. It's pretty challenging, isn't it? Ultimately, there is only one who knows the most appropriate <coughs> and fulfilling blessing for you, and that is our creator of the universe. Trust him to answer your prayer most effectively. <coughs> for example, when I get up in the morning, this is by my bed, and this is what I pray right here. I don't even get out of bed until this prayer is prayed. Now, it is not wrong to pray specific prayers. How many of you believe if you pray a specific prayer that God's going to answer it? Awesome. Great. Huh? In his way. <laughs> In his way. Right. Yes. Well, I love to pray specific prayers and watch God work. Why? Well, because what father doesn't want to give great gifts to his children, right? Okay, so I want to share about my husband. <clears throat> this is one of the most specific prayers I've ever prayed. Yeah. So on April 30th, 1993, I prayed to God that I was tired of dating in the kingdom and I'm ready to settle down. <laughs> I, was t I was in my 40s too, so I better be ready to settle down. <laughs> and... I prayed such a long prayer that I even told God that he was going to have trouble fulfilling the prayer. And then the last one was, is that I need you to bring me somebody with a bad back. Why did I pray that? Because I've been in car accidents, and I slow down a lot of times, and I needed somebody that would slow down with me, not want to go climb Mount Everest, you know, and <laughs> leave me at the bottom. Hi, honey. <laughs> so... I went on my way, and seven hours later, God answered my prayer. I was leading the group, 30-something singles here in Indianapolis, along with some great people, and he was looking for the leaders across the Midwest to go and have a, a big conference in Chicago. Well, much to his surprise, when he got a hold of me, he thought I was going to be a brother <laughs> because of my name. <laughs> yeah. So over a... Over a 45-minute conversation, we got along great. He asked me lots of questions about my dreams, aspirations, and everything. And I got off the phone, and the last, well, before I got off the phone, he says, what are you going to do this weekend? And I said, well, I'm going to play volleyball, but I can only play a couple games because I have a bad back. He goes, well, I would, we're playing volleyball tomorrow up at Lakeshore, and I just recently had a back injury. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? It's been really nice to talk to you, but I have to go. <laughs> and, and I hung the phone down, and my friend was <coughs> my friend was standing there, and she goes, "You look like you've seen a ghost." And I said, "Oh my gosh! I just talked to my future husband. <laughs> been happily married to Scott for 24 years. <coughs> I'm also a certified empowerment coach, and so when my clients are all moving out of my program and graduating, I have to pray for a whole new flock. So you better believe I'm praying specific prayers where I can find them. And I'm happy to say just because I was praying pretty diligently this week, I was able to get three new clients. So I'm excited about that. What about the lost? How specific are we about praying for the lost? Where we meet, how we meet them. I want to share a little story. I was on the way home. This was many years ago. 
And uh, I felt like God was telling me to go to Taco Bell. I go, well, I don't want to go to Taco Bell. <laughs> I want to go to Arby's. <laughs> the next thing I know, there was a guy in the lane I could not get over to go to Arby's, so I went to Taco Bell. And I said, okay, there must just be a reason for this. So I prayed. I was like, well, God, maybe this woman is w wanting to, you know, come to church. I don't know. But I feel like you're just putting me in this drive through for a reason. Next thing I know, I'm inviting her to church. She says, I just got through praying an hour ago for somebody to find me. Amen. And she became a disciple in this church. Amen. So never, never, never give up because things can happen. What about as we get older that we lose things? <laughs> can anybody relate? I feel like I'm constantly praying, God, help me to find my keys. Help me to find my cell phone. <laughs> Um, but no joking aside, God doesn't want us to stress mm -hmm. over little things like that. Mm -hmm. So if we lose things and we just pray about it, God's going to help us find it. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to spend hours and hours and hours. Yeah. It was just last week, Scott lost his keys in our yard. Oh. <laughs> I, <laughs> I have to <laughs> laugh because when you get older, this just happens in, <laughs> <laughs> in marriage. But he did find them. And how about the weather? How about the weather? Have, do you believe, sisters, that you can change God's mind when it comes to weather? No. You don't. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to. I've heard of stories like there's going to be a wedding on a Saturday and rain was in the forecast, but yeah, uh, yeah and they prayed and there was enough sun for the ceremony. That was right. that was my wedding. Wow. Definitely. Well, well, I, <laughs> 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 um. Now, don't get me wrong, <clears throat> if God chose to let it rain all day, well, then I'm still getting married, and I'd still be happy, you know. <clears throat> but the thing about it was when, um, when he pulled, when I got up in the morning, I thought, I'm going to pull these curtains back on my wedding day, and it's going to be nice and sunny. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was raining. It was pouring down rain. And Scott's texting me, and he's like, did you look out the window? And I said, yeah, no sweat. God's got this. And so um, we prayed, and we had a lot of people that morning praying that it would stop at 10 o'clock in the morning <laughs> so we could go out and get our outdoor pictures. And by the time the reception, or the reception was over with, that we'd go out and get our pictures, and the ground would be dry. God blessed everything, everything. The sun was out, and it was just a beautiful day. Um, and it's okay. It's really okay to ask God. You can change God's mind. Mm -hmm. You know why I say that? Think about Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. When Abraham was asking God, if you find 50 righteous people, mm -hmm. and then he got bold enough to even go down to five righteous mm -hmm. people. Now that's, that's boldness right mm -hmm. there in prayer. Mm -hmm. How about Zane, pal? Mm -hmm. We're all praying for him. Yes, and I can honestly tell you, we're all witnessing a miracle here. But that's because everybody's been praying specific prayers and, and prayers every day for him. Okay, so I am very excited. I want somebody to pull this up on their phone. Kathy, can you help me there? Genesis 24, verse 12 through 26. And ladies, you probably want to write that down if it's not on your sheet. This is, this is, a, this is a scripture in a chapter that I've skipped over many times. But one day, it really hit me. And this, uh, to me, is one of the most powerful specific prayers in the Bible other than Jesus going to Gethsemane. Go ahead. Verse 12, then he prayed, O Lord, God of my master Abraham, give me success today and show kindness to my master Abraham. See, I am standing beside the spring, and the daughters of the townspeople are coming to draw water. May it be that when I say to a girl, Please let down your jar that I may have a drink. And she says, Drink, and I'll water your camels too. Let her be the one you have chosen for your servant Isaac. By this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. Before he had finished praying, Rebekah came out with her jar on her shoulder. She was the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcah, who was the wife of Abraham's brother Nahor. The girl was very beautiful, a virgin. No man had ever lain with her. She went down to the spring, filled her jar, and came up again. The servant hurried to meet her and said, Please give me a little water from your jar. 
drink, my lord, she said, and quickly lowered the jar to her hands and gave him a drink. After she had given him a drink, she said, I'll draw water for your camels too until they have finished drinking. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trowel and ran back to the well to draw more water and drew enough for all his camels. Without saying a word, the man watched her closely to learn whether or not the Lord had made his journey successful. When the camels had finished drinking, the man took out a gold nose ring weighing a becca and two gold bracelets weighing ten shekels. Then he asked, Whose daughter are you? Please tell me, is there room in your father's house for us to spend the night? She answered him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, born to Nahor. And she added, We have plenty of straw and fodder, as well as room for you to spend the night. Then the man bowed down and worshipped the Lord. No, that's okay. What did you take away from that? And God granted them, right? Okay, what else? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Like I said, I've skipped over that so many times, and then in that one time, it's like, oh my goodness, <laughs> that's a, it's a it's a love story too. So the prayer does not ask for small provisions, but for abundant blessing. When we ask for large blessings, he will wisely know how and when to answer, <laughs> even though it may not be in our time frame. He is not stingy with anything he has for us, but we have to feel we deserve it, okay? He loves enthusiastic prayers and wants our passion which expresses great transparency and fervor, which God welcomes. Number four, the prayer is not time-specific. This allows God to bless us even greater whenever, wherever, and however he wants. Praying for God to bless me by next Friday, <laughs> or mind me, <laughs> is not the heart of the prayer to bed. He never gives he never gave gives God a timeline and yet it says that God granted his request. <coughs> so follow the logic in this pr in this prayers in um in his prayers. So if I was to say God bless me indeed enlarge my territory and help me to get lots of money in today. I just took that I just took that away from God. Or bring me more clients please. No. That's not it. So I don't pray that. I just go just this. This is this is my timeline here. Um, so the uh, number five. Finally, this is not a weak wish. When you are going to sporting events, <laughs> you don't see people sitting in the stands <laughs> like statues, do you? Uh, they're crazy. They're, we're, we're, we can be crazy out there. They are cheering, cheering widely and praying to God that their team win. Have you ever prayed for the Colts to win? Yeah, me too. <laughs> and, 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 and then my husband goes, well, what if God wants the other team to win? Well, then I just have to bow down and <laughs> accept it, you know, accept it. Um, okay, so one thing about this, but we can, we can be statues with our prayers to God. We really can. Dear God, bless me and Bless me for this. Bless me for that. No, God wants to hear those enthusiastic, passionate prayers. Mm -hmm. You know, he wants us to get our adrenaline pumping yeah. and our hearts racing, cheering, cheering him on so much that we lose our voices for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Now, I know for me, there's lots of times I've lost my voice praying, but it's been because I've been mad at God, Ooh. not because I've been enthusiastic with God. Um, I'm working on that, ladies. <laughs> But just remember one thing. God is our biggest cheerleader. Mm -hmm. When you pray as Jabez did, you are asking with everything inside of you to ask. You're asking God to mobilize you into a relationship with him. It is not just reciting a prayer. It is walking into the heart of the prayer of the faith that Jabez did. Exodus 14, 14 says, the Lord will fight for you. Just be still. Let us learn to be still and listen to his voice. 
You know, I'm, I'm here to tell you that I believe one thing, one thing that can kill our prayer life and listening to God's voice is technology. How many times have you prayed and then you hear that ding? Oh, I need to check that. That might be emergency. <laughs> then you don't know where you, where you were at in the Bible. <laughs> but we've all done that, right? We're not, we're not giving God our... Sure. It's just like occurred to me, okay? So how do you put those two together? If you're saying the prayer of Jabez in faith and you're asking God to bless you, but then it's supposed to be specifics, but what if the specific you want, you're just saying... Well, don't say it because you just took that away from God, so mm -hmm. I'm confused. Okay. How, is, how are you combining the specific prayer with the prayer of Jabez if we can't really, like, say, okay, God, I want a house. Bless me with a house. So you just took that away from God. So I'm just like. So what? No, I'm just saying when you pray this prayer, okay, this is not specific prayers. This is what God wants to do when he wants to do it. But when you're praying specific prayer with God, other than this, then that's where you're going to see God starting to work. Does that make sense? Ladies, does that make sense? Can I add a little bit to that? Sure. Because much like you, I praised, prayed for my husband before I met him almost a whole year. And I wasn't dating in the kingdom, rather the taverns. And my father did not like that at all. And um, yeah. specifically, I wrote down I things that only God knew. However... I've got a friend now that's single, just went through a breakup after 10 years of dating a guy. And she has been dating guys who are not suited for her. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, have you prayed for your spouse who you're going to date? And she said, well, yeah, I just keep saying, God, will you just send me anybody, just somebody? And I, said, <laughs> I hope you're not listening, but actually... If you continue to say just anybody, just somebody, that's who the mm -hmm. Lord is going to meet you where your faith is. Mm -hmm. But if you say, I want a man of God who is 6'3", 280 pounds, has a heart to serve you, um, played football at Ben Davis, loves sports. I mean, these were specific things that I prayed for yeah. my spouse so that when he said, yeah, I went to Ben Davis, but I didn't graduate, but I did play football. Much like you, teacher, I said, Lord, is this you? So hopefully that helps to understand <laughs> yeah. that difference mm -hmm. and, and where we can, we do have a little bit of grace in this. Absolutely, in this absolutely. My prayer list for my husband was this long. No, probably that long. <laughs> okay, so the prayer for blessing. First Thessalonians 5.17 says, Never stop praying. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So do you want God's blessing so much that you ask with hunger and urgency? Or have we lost that? As the older, as the older we get in Christ, we can lose that. The large and small blessings that surround us definitely come from God. When you ask God to bless you a lot, you are inviting him to engage in one of his favorite activities. After all, we are commanded in the Bible to ask God for what? Everything. Everything. So I want to talk, I got to move on. Uh, Luke 18, verse 1, eight, 1 through 8, the persistent widow. Okay, for the sake of time, we're not going to read it, but I think everybody knows what the persistent widow is. She wore God out <coughs> with her coming, okay? Has there ever been a time in your life where you wore God out with your consistent prayers? I'll share. I wore God out with wanting a husband. I mean, I'm sure he just said, I've got to give this woman this husband <laughs> because she's driving me crazy. <laughs> How about you? Anybody want to share? Sure, Dana. Um, I felt like I, I wore God out um, to, ble to bless my daughter, Whitney. Mm. Mm. Oh, yes, and absolutely. She was just so sick for a you know, long, long time. Yeah. Years and years and years and years. And years. Mm. And she was absolutely miserable. And we, I, I know I shared with you that at one point she was so hopeless and so 
depressed and suicidal that we pulled out a whiteboard and put it in our living room and said, tell me the specifics of what you want. My husband did this. And then we would pray. Every time we'd walk to the living room, we would pray for that list. <coughs> and um, specifically, she wanted a husband, and now she's having a baby. Mm-hmm. She didn't think that she was going to be able to have a baby. And she'd been told, mm-hmm. don't ever have children. Oh, wow. Handle it. Mm. And so there's like so many things that, I mean, we didn't know what God was going to do with it, but I, I just, mm-hmm. I'm amazed at what God Mm-hmm. how God has restored her health. Mm-hmm. And it, believe me, it's hard work because she has to be like gluten-free, sugar-free, fat-free, mm-hmm. spices-free. She's, she is diligent with her diet. But wow. because of it, she's very disciplined and she is healthy. Amen. 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 That's outstanding. Okay. Oh, I was, was going to say, it just occurred to me that I guess I was praying a specific prayer and I didn't, I maybe didn't realize it, uh, but uh, my daughter just came back from Haiti with the Hope uh, Seagulls mission mm-hmm. trip, and um, there was an uprising in Haiti. So mm-hmm. I kept praying, yeah, because mm-hmm. my mother kept calling and telling me, don't let her go, don't let her go. Oh, her. my goodness. So they, they live in Miami, so they get the news. Mm-hmm. We don't get it here. Mm-hmm. But the atrocities that were going on, and mm-hmm. my sister lives in Haiti. So I just kept praying, God, be with the Hope, you know, protect them, send your angels to, mm-hmm. to guide them and protect them. So... My daughter's back home. Oh, yay. Amen. 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 Kathy. That's great. Well, years ago, before we adopted David, Mm -hmm. I just put on my heart to adopt a child. We had two miscarriages. I have a brother who's adopted, and I thought, okay, God, this is it. And Lee wasn't feeling that way. Whenever there was a message about adoption, I'd like give him the big elbow. I'd give him (laughs) stuff to read and just (laughs) everything. And then God just put on my heart to just stop bugging and he asked me too he said you're bugging me you're nagging me I'm like okay I know that's not right so um, then it occurred to me I wasn't praying every day mm-hmm. I'm like how can I be wanting God to do this if I don't come in at least daily to pray so I decided to zip my lip <laughs> <laughs> and prayed for every day I mean I'm, I'm sure I missed a few here and there but every day for three years wow. and Lee said one day uh, we had talked prior that maybe you know, if we if we adopted, you know, would it be a boy or girl? If we adopted, what age and everything? But that was just kind of little tiny conversations. So he one day he said, he goes, gosh, if we want to have it in the age and the parameters and before he goes to kindergarten, he goes, we better do that now. And I went, whoa, are you kidding me? And I was on the phone that day getting the paperwork started. I mean, it was just, oh. that was totally God because it, I didn't, it was totally God. Yeah. So, so I got to move on, ladies. Or we'll, we'll be still here at 10:30. Uh, but I hope you're enjoying this. Some of God's greatest blessings are reserved for those who ask for a truly abundant life. Abundant. God wants to bless us abundantly. Sometimes in our past we can't feel that though because we still are stuck in some of the scarcity mindset. I know I'm still working through my blocks. What blessings have you not asked God for because you were too afraid to ask or you did not feel it would really matter to God? Anything matters to God, ladies. You matter to God. But we see in Luke 18, verse 1 through 8, the persistent widow kept asking. She wouldn't stop, and and, and God was like, I'm done with you, lady. I'm going to give you what you want. Jabez made a simple prayer, but it was asking God to bless him straight up. I asked God to bless me with a husband, like I said, for six years. He finally did. Not on my time, but on his. So I kept that in mind as I keep praying. And faithfully and successfully, God has advanced and take new ground in my prayer life for him. Let your hand be with me. And Jabez was calling on God for protection, provision, and strength. He was confident and reliant in the power of God. And we see that in the way Jabez was calling on God to keep his hand on him. God's hand implies power. Mm. Is that not awesome? Mm -hmm. God's hand implies power. After reading the scripture for over the, after reading the scripture um, over the years, I came out with a new and deep conviction that the hand of God is released when we dare to step boldly out of our comfort zone and serve him. That can be scary, can't it? The hand of God is divine intervention. 
He breaks through into our world in our time and space to perform, to perform his will in such a way that amazes us and causes people to say, look what my God just did. Mm -hmm. It is time for us to start sharing with others what God is doing in our lives. Mm -hmm. Conversations do not need to be around who's going to win the Colts <laughs> or the football game. It doesn't need to be around how your kids are not doing well. It needs to be around what God is doing in your life. Mm. When we don't share God's blessings with others, we leave them out of our joy. Mm. I love to share what God's been doing in my life mm. with others because I feel like I'm going to be able to be used by him to inspire and hopefully build their faith. Just remember one thing, he can do anything he wants at any time. Don't you just love to see people's faith rise when they share about what God's doing in their life? Don't you love to hear from the podium what, how, what God's doing in people's lives? Sure. The hand of God is not guided by our wishes or desires, but by his will. He can do anything, like well, I, I just repeated, I'm repeating myself here. His will is wisest and best. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. <laughs> we know this by the movement of his hand resulting in miracles. It may not be in the way we feel or in our circumstances, but we know his hand brings change. He opened up his hand by saving my life so many times. He stepped into my misery and made it, um, made it my mission over and over again. And I don't have time to share my story. It was a rough road, but I know that it sharpened me to be used more by God for his magnificent purpose. I don't take credit for myself. I know who the prayer of Jabez focuses on, God. But I am his child, and so are you. You have access to the Father any time to ask him to have his hand be with you. The next one, keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. When Jabez prayed, keep me, he was asking God to act in protection. But his motive for not wanting evil in his life was so profound when he said that I may not cause pain. When we participate in evil, we cause pain and grief to others mm. as well as ourselves. But even more so, our relationship with God suffers. Jabez wanted to protect his relationship with God as well as having protection. He knew what was most important. Do you believe that God protects us? Yes. Okay. Well, I want to share very quickly how I ended up in a relationship with God. This is a very nutshell story. I was sexually assaulted at a shopping center. A guy had a knife to my side and to my throat, and only way that I, I got out of this alive is by praying a very specific prayer. I did not, I was not raised in a religious home. I did not know God, never prayed to God. I said, God, uh, you don't, I, I know you know me, but I don't know you, but I'm going to ask this prayer. And if you get me out of this situ situation alive, I will turn my life over to you. And next thing I know, the guy opens the car, my car door and says, get out. And I, okay, thank you. And next thing I know, uh, I'm in a church. I meet this woman <laughs> along with some other women, and now I've been faithful to God for 31 years. Yes. But God had his protection over me that day. He really did. When we, see, um, we, we have, when we see this played out in our lives, it can be in a form of being hurt by people. Have you ever been hurt by people? Yes. Yeah, I've been hurt by groups of people. <clears throat> as well as singly. I did have evil thoughts in my heart <coughs> during some of those times, but this prayer has helped me through it. it. We are human, so this can happen to any of us, right? We know we are under attack every day as Christians, but we are still battle worthy. Mm -hmm. We have an enemy. He wants us to back under his control. He wants, to, he wants us back under his control and authority, using any circumstance to do so. He will plot and plan and use any one he needs to distract us. Mm -hmm. Don't you agree there? Mm -hmm. He will cause friction with God, our sisters and brothers, spouses, and friends. He can, 
we can get complacent as we mature in our faith. So the armor of God in Ephesians 6 is a serious, serious matter. When was the last time you cried out to God to send more protection and reinforcements into your situation? Many of God's people rise to the challenge to take the new territory and find themselves under attack, both spiritually and physically. You know what, though? When I'm under attack, spiritually or physically, I know God's got something great right around the corner. Mm -hmm. And Satan doesn't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. This causes some of us to turn away from this pray prayer. We get scared. I have done that, too. But I wanted to be loved and I wanted to give love. So I had to continue, continue in this prayer. Having evil thoughts and feelings would only destroy me. Jabez knew this for many reasons as we see this in this bold prayer. He knew that it would lead him far from God. What it means to pray for protection? Do you think it's wrong to ask God to minimize our suffering? It really isn't. God cares about the pain we experience and concern for the condition of our, our relationship with him. He knows that sin causes far more harm than physical pain or hardship. Mm -hmm. The prayer for protection is not only for the future, but also for today. Praying about evil keeps you alert to the spiritual battle that rages around and within you. One of Satan's favorite tricks is to create a false sense of security mm -hmm. so that we might drop our defenses. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there is a misconception out there about God knowing when we are tempted so prayer isn't necessary since he will protect us. The fact is praying for protection will greatly affect the degree of whether or not you are tempted. So we have to keep vigil. Mm -hmm. I know what evil can do. Evil stared me down in the face with my ex-husband who murdered someone in cold blood. That is a story for another day. And when I was sexually assaulted at the mall that I just shared, I could have been, I could be dead right now. What a great God I serve. Mm -hmm. Perhaps we have our own ideas how things should work out in our lives, but God's ways are not our ways. Mm -hmm. In the Bible, Jacob wrestled with God in Genesis 32, verse 22 through 32. In verse 26, Jacob told God, I won't let you go unless you bless me. Yeah, it's challenging. <laughs> I won't go. I won't stop until you bless me. He was bold in his prayers, and he was bold in his language with God. His territory was enlarged after that when he was, been, when he was blessed by God and his brother. Azu forgave him and helped him. Mary had the Son of God without any man touching her. Talk about enlarging your territory. <laughs> She was a woman who prayed for a family with all of her heart. Look what God blessed her with. I see this in my own life. I needed my territory expanded, and it wasn't about geographic. It was about me reaching the lost, the wounded and left behind. I saw the need for the victims of domestic violence, and God expanded my territory. When I took the turn after somebody shared how much they believed in me to start my own company three years ago, it was still very uncharted territory for me. Was I scared? Yes. But I knew God was right there walking me out of that boat. He can do the same for you. My territory was enlarged when I trusted God would bless me and I would be protected by him and not by any man. Okay, so Proverbs 3.5. We're going to wind down here. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. Ask for your dreams and trust the Lord your God to deliver in big ways. People who have yield big results. So I have a question for you. I want you to go back into your childhood just a few minutes and think about when you went to see Santa Claus. Okay? The excitement. You got your little cute little dress on. Mom, you probably put you in a stupid hat like my mom did me. And off we went. But when we got on Santa Claus's lap, okay, and you rattled off all these things, you know, chatty Cathy doll or Play-Doh, I'm you know, throwing things out here. When you got off his lap, 
did you believe that you were going to get those things that Santa Claus said that he was going to give you? Okay. That is my simple formula to my prayer life right there. When I go to God, I dream, I vision that he is on, I'm sitting on his lap, I'm looking at him, and I'm rallying off my prayer list. And that has helped me to so much grow in my prayer life. And it may, it could apply to you too. This is just for me. This is my formula. Okay. Are you ready? Really, really ready to start reciting this prayer? If you are really ready for God to enlarge your territory, you better fasten your seatbelts. First Chronicles 4.10 says, if God doesn't put his hand upon you, it will all fall apart. We know that in truth. We all have had moments when we have taken ourselves down the road to the point where we know our best efforts are doomed to failure unless he comes through, right? He wants us to invite, he wants us to invite him into this, but we play things safely. We may never know this. Venturing beyond where we feel safe in our prayers is going to allow us to see God's hand working powerfully in our lives. Mm -hmm. What things in our lives may have been hindering us from venturing out of our comfort zones? It may be fear of failure. It could be doubt. It could be insecurity. It could be people telling you that you won't make it. Anybody relate to me on that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, but we as sisters can take that leap of faith mm -hmm. and fulfill God the rest of our life. I wasn't always ready to be able to do all this stuff. I never thought I could even start to begin what God has put me in, uh, you know, in charge of doing. But he, c he can and he will and he will do that to you. Stepping out of our comfort zones can yield more power in our lives than you can ever imagine. Look around at people who are successful in our church. Ask them what they do in their prayer life. You will be simply amazed. Ask them to pray with you. You will see the boldness in their prayers. They know that what blessings God has in store as they see their lives unfold. So I have a few tips that I'd like to give you. And by the way, I read partly one of the chapters out of my book, and so that's why I wanted to read this and give this all to you. Number one, I encourage you to pick up the book, The Prayer of Jabez by Bruce Wilkinson. After you read that, I challenge you to read the book Beyond the Prayer of Jabez. That book will also change your life. I get to about three chapters and I gotta put it down. Write down things that may be hindering you from venturing out of your comfort zones. And we all have a past, ladies, right? We may have been hurt. We may be feeling, feel rejection, abandonment, you know, betrayal, anything like that. That's it, but that, those things will hold you back from stepping out of your comfort zone. Tip number three, start reciting the prayer of Jabez every day for the rest of your life. Are you going to do that? Is anybody scared to start this? If you are, please come and talk to me. We'll pray together. <laughs> Purchase a journal and begin to write down every blessing that comes your way. Review your blessings when you are confronted with hard times. I know Margaret, she's, she's, she's a journalist. <laughs> And she's told me that when she gets into those hard times, she just goes back and looks at all of her pray prayers that God has blessed her with. <coughs> and the last thing, sisters, please remember that you are worthy to pray just like Jabez did. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody have any questions, answers, comments? Thank you. <laughs> I do have one quick question. Sure. Um, in regards to when I pray and I just say, Lord, according to your will, mm -hmm. will it be done. Mm -hmm. My prayer starts with just like you did. And then I 
how to just raise our adults can show up for these like no matter what grade you're raising them. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to encourage someone um, like my college that will be able to be a bit more specific and still under that umbrella of God's will. You have to pray and accept the fact that God may not bless you with that prayer for a while. Mm-hmm. You have to be accepting of that. Like on my wedding day, <coughs> I prayed that specific prayer, but I had to be accepting that if it's God's will to let it rain all day, mm-hmm. I can't go and grab them by the throat and tell them, you know, you have to change this. I <laughs> Anybody else? That is a very good question. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send them to you. I'm going to email them to you. So I need everybody at the end to write down. If you go ahead and pass. Actually, go pa- pass that around. <coughs> so the question that you had was how do you know when you're praying specific prayers or the Lord's will be done? Okay. Anybody else have anything to add? What are you thinking? How do you not be afraid that God's just, I just grew up with under a dark cloud that God's going to strike, strike you down and God's just going to punish you for every little thing is punish, punish, punish. So mm-hmm. how do you just trust that God's not going to punish you for asking mm-hmm. for something specific? I have a response. Sure. When I think about how you... Uh, would like to bless your daughter. You mentioned your daughter. You may have other children. But if you're like me, you enjoy every moment when she comes over to visit and you want to give her things and you think about her and you pray for her and you put things aside. Oh, when she comes over, I'm going to give her that. That's how God feels about us. Mm -hmm. That's how it feels about you. He wants to bless you. (coughs) He wants to hear from you and spend time with you. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a question. Were you raised around a strict father? Well, my dad was strict, too. I mean, lots of punishment and stuff like that. So when I came into the kingdom, I looked at God as that type. Mm -hmm. So I always felt like, oh, my gosh, if I sin, (laughs) you know, the hammer is coming down. And I had to get out of that mindset. So there is a book I would really encourage you to get. It's called His Image, My Image. Okay, and it talks about the earthly father versus the heavenly father. So many times we can have that block with God. We can get so close to God, but if we have that father figure like that, it keeps us from getting intimate with God. Does that help? You're welcome. Anybody else? Sure. Um, one thing I, sh- I have a lot of desire and dream for my future and you know, excitement, but sometimes it can be a little bit of a little selfish ambition, a little bit of like, oh, I hope that I and prosperous, or I hope that I have this and have that. How do you, in your life, balance those desires for, like, things of the world versus, like, God's kingdom and his? Sometimes I'll be, I'll be praying, and I'll just kind of switch. Like, just, I'm all over. There's just so much desire. I, I, want, I want it to be godly, but I, I find myself, like, dreaming of, like, oh, if only I could have material, just things that are material or money-wise, and I just battle with that in my ambition with God. So I heard from a very uh, godly woman one day. Again, it's not wrong to pray what you want to pray, but you start praying for other people first, and then that selfish, what you call selfish ambition, I call it just asking God for prayer. It will, it will, it, it works itself out. Mm-hmm. Well, I like, uh, my father always told me, because I, much like you, have a similar heart, he always said, Crystal, seek ye first the kingdom of God, that's how it that's how all these things and all everything will be added unto you. Mm-hmm. But if you're praying for that new car, mm-hmm. but maybe there is a friend or somebody who's got a need as well, and maybe um, for your heart to pray for her to get that blessing, mm-hmm. and then when you see her get that blessing, is your heart still there that for you so that you take that mm-hmm. selfish me out of it, but mm-hmm. you're more outward and saying, Lord, please bless her so that she might receive, mm-hmm. and also that he would bring that to pass for you as well. Mm-hmm. And pray for someone else first and their, their yeah. blessing and then they focus off me and what I need, mm-hmm. need more. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I have a question. 
does anybody in here believe that you're not enough with God in Christ? Okay. So if I was to say, everybody get their cell phone out, because I've been doing that. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> if I was, yeah, if I were to say. But I've done this in big speaking engagements before when I spoke at church conferences. I asked them, okay, I want, I want everyone to consider thinking that you're getting your cell phone out. Now, when I count to three, can you go find me a scripture that says God doesn't think you're enough? And they'll just have this blank look on their face. I said, it's not there. It's not, it's not there. Somewhere in down the road in your past, somebody told you that you were not enough to make you believe that lie. I'm speaking from experience here. There's not anything in the Bible that comes remotely closely for God to say that to you. We just believe that from somebody. Like I said, I heard I'm not smart enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm never going to amount to anything. These are the things I heard. And so that's why I work so diligently on to find God more intimately and to call him my best friend. Because I can go to God and good, bad, and ugly. Thank you. <laughs> that makes sense? Ladies, thank you so much. I've thoroughly enjoyed this.